please may that forecast be wrong. It, it, it's going to be wrong. It's going to be wrong. It is going to snow. Welcome to What Is It About the Weather, a podcast where we explore the many ways that weather intertwines itself into our lives. I'm your host, Mark Jelenic. This week, we're going to be talking about underdog weather. But as always, before we get to the main topic, I hope you're having a good weather span of time. Insert your span of time here since we last communicated. Winter has finally started to arrive for me, clearly a little late. Read stories about bears out and about even this past week. I, you know, not something you would he- normally hear this time of year up here. But it does seem to arrive. I missed another snow event. I, you know, stayed a little bit warm. But we finally have had some truly kind of wintry days. Went out for a walk yesterday. I was dog sitting a little bit. And it was one of those walks where I probably, I was cold at times. And, you know, it didn't bother me too much. I mean, I, I kind of know my limits. But we get to the sun and was thankful for the sun in those moments. So, see, it, it makes you more appreciative when you have all these different things going on. So, grateful for all that. Tonga. I want to talk about Tonga for a minute. I, you know, it was one of my, my own things last week. I even thought about it after I said about the whole Tonga th- satellite imagery being cool and stuff. And I thought to myself, you know, that wasn't very... <sighs> representative of how I was feeling overall. But it was in the moment how I th- was thinking about how neat that stuff was. But, you know, it got me back to one of my premises that we've even talked about here before, which is... You know, trying to put that all in context sometimes, and so you know, and and I probably didn't check it as much at the door as I as I should have. In any case, I, I I guess what I'm most thankful about from all the reports because you know there was this big communication blackout that overall it seems that the people of Tonga, the people of Tonga, have survived fairly well. It doesn't seem like the islands of Tonga have necessarily fared very well, but there are operations underway to you know to try to get them. You know, first and foremost, some some healthy water because the ash is, you know, that's just going to be a big issue there. And all the other pieces, restoring communication because the main line to Tonga was severed. And I think I've, I'm going to put a link in the show notes. There's, you know, there was the famous wrestler uh, in the most recent Olympics from Tonga. Got a lot of coverage. And he started a GoFundMe page. So if you're interested in contributing to what's going on there, I think you can do that there. You know, as always, uh, be care- I, I, it's tricky because I appreciate these platforms being available and hopefully all that will go to, you know, use your own due diligence in that, if you will. Okay. But there are opportunities to make sure that this, you know, Fairly small in terms of people, only a hundred thousand, I think, is roughly the total population are able to recover, you know, in a in a healthy way, in a quick way. So, support them if you think it's appropriate. I had some shake my head moments this week too. So this the snowstorm that didn't get me actually got it, it, this is multiple times this year south of me, and in particular, it got in the southern U.S. Areas got you know inches over a foot of snow, I got rain. <laughs> Actually, I did get a little snow on both sides, but for the most part, it was a rain event for me. But I was struck again, stories, and it was weird because I, I woke up and I was reading this story about a hiker that got went, decided to go out in the storm, you know, or know the storm was coming and wish they hadn't. And a helicopter from the Tennessee National Guard had to come in and do a rescue because of how remote the area was. And I was reading another story And I thought it was the same story about another hiker. It happened to actually be over North Carolina, so just over the border. Those two states that, for people that don't know, have a a common border. And it is the Appalachian Mountains, and it is the Appalachian Trail where both of these people were near. And this hiker, people came in on snowshoes and got him out. And I was like, those stories don't match up. And then I realized, truly, it was two different hikers. And just shaking my head of people that I guess thought they'd be okay. And weren't, and I'm glad it didn't turn out bad, but uh, all of us need a dose of that every now and then, a reminder that, you know, these storms can be deadly and dangerous and use some common sense. All right, let's talk about the fact that I was rooting for snow and I didn't get snow. And, 
you know, it hit me for a moment. It's like, that's not very, that's not very good of a professional to go. I hope the professional forecast is wrong. I hope that I do get snow. I got to get snow. And I, you know, I felt a little guilty for a moment, but then I started realizing that wanting to be the, the forecast to be wrong. I wasn't really rooting for the forecast to be wrong, right? I was rooting for the underdog forecast. I was rooting for the snow to happen that could happen. And I, I don't think this is unique to me. I think a lot of times when you see hype around a forecast, like a snow forecast in particular, I'm I'm hoping that, you know, I have this fun thing that I enjoy. And I think a lot of times with snowstorms, people enjoy that kind of stuff. Now, not everybody does. and But I do it other times too. When I see a tropical cyclone or a powerful hurricane, barreling in on some small island and I know they're not going to have the chance to to do anything about it of course I'm rooting for the forecast to be wrong I hope that it's wrong in those cases and sometimes they are but most often they're not and all I can say is you know people try to give you as much time and warning as they could and you want people to be able to respond to that and so I guess sometimes I am rooting against the forecast, but in those cases too, I'm sort of rooting for the underdog forecast. I, I'm rooting for the tropical cyclone that has some sympathy and some compassion. But why do we do it, right? I mean, we don't do this just with the weather. There, by no means do we do this just with the weather. I don't care, you know, how much sport you're into or not. If you ever kind of you go into, let's say, a Super Bowl party or something, right? And somebody's there that just doesn't follow football. Nothing wrong with that. Fine with that. And they may even say who who's supposed to win and who's not supposed to win. And you'll find them cheering for the person that is the underdog, right? So why do we do it? Because I don't care whether it's sports or medicine. I mean, you're rooting for the other underdog quite often when someone you're you're rooting for is battling against the odds. Right? And that those cases are very personal, and we understand those. But just in general, when you read a story, and it can be about politicians. I read an article about back in the '80s about how they did these either these sample polls, and they told some you know this group of people that so and so was behind in the poll, and they took a vote. And then they did the same thing for another group of people and told them just the opposite and took a vote. And in both cases, people voted for the underdog. Now, that was a very simplistic case and there were no other things involved, but it, it kind of proved the point that we have this tendency to go for the person or the thing or the situation that seems to have less of a chance that seems to be outnumbered, outmanned, outgunned, whatever you you know name you want to throw at it. So why do we do it? Well, there is a lot of science around this because it's been studied for ages. This is not a new topic. And there's a German phrase, and I always am going to mess up a German phrase, but it's called Schadenfreude. Okay, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but the idea it, it literally translates into the reason I like it is. It translates into harm joy, right? That we get joy out of someone else not doing well. And they've looked into it and it's like, it's not just about, it's not really that we want someone, we want to create the harm and we enjoy it, but we get satisfaction for a variety of reasons, okay? And it can be, I mean, that we just don't like the person that the outcome's going against. And you know, think about it in sports, right? You can take somebody like a Tiger Woods who was on the top of the game for a very long time, and people would root for him because of that. He was their favorite. But people would also root against him because they wanted someone else. They wanted to believe, no matter how good he was, that someone else could get the job done in the moment and beat him, okay? So we do it all the time do it all the time and and we have this apparently thing within us right that we want there to be some sort of balancing out apparently so it's not it's usually not that we want somebody to fail 
We just want someone to not dominate, or we want a situation to not dominate. So my snow thing, probably, and, and it can be whatever forecast you are, wherever you are. Let's say you're in an area that in the winter time or a certain season tends to get a lot of rain, right? And there are plenty of places that do that. Monsoon seasons or even different you know times of the year. It's the rainy season. And you see a forecast for a sunny day in there. And you go, oh, goodness, we're going to get a sunny day. It's got to happen. And, and the forecast is a low percentage thing. And it comes and it goes. You know, you're watching it for about a week. And one forecast, it's there. And then it seems to go away. And then it comes back. And you're just hoping beyond hope that you get it. Now, you may just want the sun. But in some way, it's like you just don't want the rain to have this all-powerful situation that it always wins. Okay? So part of it is we also, though, the reason we enjoy the underdog, even if we're not rooting for them. So sometimes, like I said, it's about justice, right? But there's other things at play too. We, we often in life feel that achieving certain things are very difficult for us as individuals. Okay. So we want to be able to believe that in the right scenario that no matter what the situation is, we too can come out on top. Right. And that, that can be in our work life. It could be winning the lottery. I don't, I don't care what it is, but we want to believe that we too can be that person that we too can be the one that defied the odds that came out ahead. So there's this relation. So, you know, we, we talked about a little bit about justice. We, we want to see, you know, we feel it's fair right out. But as an individual, we relate to it and we want to believe that and it's kind of part of our psyche, right? You've always been told whatever you try, if you try hard enough or whatever, you can do anything you want to do. And, and the realities quite often are not that simple, right? Maybe you're just not designed to be a singer or maybe you're just not designed to be a pro athlete. I mean, we all have our limits, okay? Now, doesn't mean you can't work at something real hard and, and succeed at something, just maybe not to the level of someone who's naturally gifted in a certain area. But we want to, we relate because we want to see ourselves as capable of doing that. Okay. And then somewhere underneath it all, there's also just this basic joy we get in the unexpected. And it probably has something to do with the idea that we expect the expected to happen all the time and our brains are kind of attuned to that, right? But when the underdog thing happens, it brings joy because it reminds us of all these other things that I was just talking about, whether it's I can do it too or it seems just, right? It's finally, just the average Joe or the average Sarah, it doesn't matter who, could just achieve and achieve in a way that wasn't expected by. It's always better, right, when it's just it's out of the blue, right? And you're just like, wow, you hear that story and you go along doing that. But it can happen in weather too, right? So I get to this point where I'm like, I really hope I'm not, for the most likely, like I said, when I see a tropical cyclone and I want it to move for a reason, I, those are times I genuinely want the forecast to be a bust. But with a snow event, it's not, I don't want the forecast to be a bust. It's better for everybody else if they're accurate and we improve the science because then when one is forecasted, I can count on that forecast. And that's what I keep telling you guys. I want you to believe in the forecast and trust in it. I, I saw a story this week where there was a judge somewhere, I think it was in Texas. And, you know, his line was, we can't even tell the, the weather more than 15 minutes in advance. And of course, I, a meteorologist picked that up and said, well, that's not true. And, it, but it reminds you, right, that I, I'm all the time telling you that you can believe in the forecast more and more and how things have advanced and how the technology's changed and our abilities have changed and what we understand about the science has changed and all those things have helped us make better forecast. All that said, right, I don't want forecasts to fail from that standpoint, but every now and then I do. 
do want this little, little thing <laughs> of just a miss, just kind of. But it's because I, I want this underdog event. Because I know how hard, I do know how hard a snowstorm has to work in many cases to be successful. It sounds weird, right? But I know the fine line between snow and rain or sleet and, and ice and all those things and how in different areas, how delicate that balance can be. This year it's near me. Growing up, it's in an area that uh, has already seen probably more snow than I have this year. That's not true. I did have enough snow on one event that kept me above them, but... It's tricky, and it's okay. I'm not going to get mad at anybody who roots for the forecast to be wrong for an underdog. Or I mean, there's all sorts of reasons you can root for a forecast to be wrong. You're having an outdoor wedding, and you want the weather to not rain. It's okay. Don't ever feel guilty about it. But don't be surprised when the forecast is actually accurate. That's the harder thing, right, that we've all got to deal with. And I deal with that, too. I'm like, yeah, the other day when this, this event was coming through, and it, it was spot on, and it had been for days. The week before, there was talk of we were going to get snow. And I was looking at some of these forecasts. But I was watching the forecast very close to me. And, and, and again, I tend to view these from different agencies, whether it's government agencies or private sector. My own analysis, I tend to look at it. It's like, nah, it's just all lining up to where... It's, it was going to be cold in the morning. We're going to get a little snow, but the, the warm air is going to push through. You know, we might get a little snow towards the end. And I kind of recognized that and saw it for what it was. And the forecasts were spot on for days. They were spot on. And for something that could be so close to being out of alignment, it's good. It's good that the, the forecast was that accurate because they're not always that accurate with these, these borderline events, if you will. So I was grateful that the forecast came out, even if it meant that I didn't get my underdog weather. Any case, I hope you enjoy underdog weather. I hope you have some that you can root for and that it happens from time to time. And, you know, it's just another example of when you think about when you're cheering for underdogs, I'm going to put a couple links in the show notes that talk about the science of why we do this. Like I said, you can, you can Google it too. You don't even have to, you can just Google why, why, why do we cheer for underdogs? And there'll be a plethora of articles that you can read from credible sources where you can examine why it is that we do this thing and why it's actually good for us that that underdog events happen even if it means that the outcome is inconsistent with what most people were expecting and why it's why it's important for us from time to time to be kind of thrown off our, our guard a little bit any case let me know what your under guard weather is if you have things that you, because, you know, like I said, mine's always kind of in these snow forecasts, but I can imagine there's a variety of things that people hope for depending where they are. What is it about the weather at gmail.com? You can, of course, find me Mark underscore Jelinek on Twitter. What is about the weather on Twitter? You can go to the Patreon page and post it on the Patreon post. Aaron's been doing a lot of that. He, he, he keeps me going with the conversations on there. We're still having rain bucket conversations on from the, the episode a couple weeks ago. Any case, I got to get back to practicing my presentation for the AMS meeting this upcoming week. It's one of the other places I need to use my voice this week, so I'm going to preserve it a little bit and let you guys go. But just remember, just remember, when you're rooting for the little guy or gal, that there's much more to weather than the weather itself. <laughs>